Welcome back. We're going to take a look at a data structure here that's really useful to use in your games. Uh, it's going to be one of a few data structures we take a look at in the course. This one is called a list. Now everybody here knows what a list is, so it shouldn't be too hard to uh, get the idea of what we're doing. We're going to store information inside of a list. Now you may wonder when you ever do that in a game, but there's lots of situations. You could have inventory, what the players collected. Um, you could keep a list of what the object or the player has done in the past. You could keep a list of monsters or things that are going to come out and attack the player. Um, you could keep a list of scores. Really, uh, the list goes on and on, right? No pun intended. Now, here's a little introduction to the list data structure. I've got a little note sheet here that you can link to. And what it is, is this is going to sort of walk us through some of the main commands, how to make a list, and then how to use the list. Now, there's only about five or six scripts that you use with a list, so it's not too hard to start to learn how to use. The first thing you're going to want to do with a list is you're going to want to create the list. The script to use for that is DS, which I think stands for data structure uh, and sort of the game maker language there. So they've called it data structure list create. No parameters, and this will go behind the scenes and make your list in memory for you. Now, what this script does is it returns the ID of the list you just created. And what this means is it's sort of like just like an instance of a game object in your game. This list has its own ID. If you ever want to do anything to that list again, you have to remember this ID. So you'll see what I've done here. This might send back a number like 2,117,000. I'm going to remember that with the variable my list. Anytime I want to add to my list, you're going to see right here. We may as well do it. You just have to say DS list add. That's one of the game maker scripts. You tell it the list you want to add to, which is my list, right? Remember, that's the ID number. So it can find that list in memory and then you tell it what you want to add. Now here I've added the word Apple, but I could have added 15. I could have added 205.342. You can add pretty well anything you want there. Okay, but basically numbers and strings are what you're going to be doing. You'll see here I add another item to the list, ball. I add another item to the list, car. What does this actually do uh, behind the scenes? It's basically made a list that looks something like this. The list has slots, which they call index positions. And in each index position, we have one of our pieces of data. When you just use the add command like this, it always adds to the end of the list. So at the very beginning, when you added apple, slot 0 had apple. When you added ball, slot 1 has ball. When you added car, slot 2 gets car. And so on and so on. The lists can get really long. I don't know the exact size the list maxes out at, but you could check in the Game Maker docs, right? It'll tell you. But it's a lot. It's not like 10 or 50. Okay, you can go into thousands and thousands. Okay, so you can put a lot of stuff in there. Now, let's say you want to add to a list, but you don't want to add to the end of the list. You want to add to a specific spot in the list. This is the insert script. So DS list insert. You tell it the list. You tell it the insert position, and then you tell it the value that you want to insert. And you can see here what it's done. That's why these lists are great. You insert, dog goes into position one, and ball and car slide down into position two and three. So just because it was in position uh, one and two before does not mean they stay in position one and two forever. Okay, As things get deleted or inserted, the list grows and shrinks accordingly, and everything slides into position. Another popular method, you want to be able to delete something from the list. So all you do here is you just give it the list, the delete script, and tell it which index position you want to delete. Now you have to remember that the first position is 0. So when I say my list 1, it does not mean delete the first item in the list. That really means delete index 1, which is the 
second item in the list. Common beginner mistake to forget that this counting starts at index position zero. Now, what else are you going to do in your list? You're going to try to find information in your list. There's two main commands that help you find stuff in your list. And these two commands sort of sound the same, but they are different. The first one is dslist find value. Now, like the name suggests here, you're trying to find a value. So what you do is you mention the list you want to work with, and you say which index position. And it will send you back the value. So this script returns a string if there's a string there. It returns a number if there's a number there, et cetera, et cetera. So you have to be able to capture the answer here. So I'm saying, hey, val equals whatever the value is at index position 2. As we peek back at our list here, index position 2 had car in it right now. So value would be set equal to car. Now, that's the find something based on you tell it where to go. The other popular method that you use a lot is find index position. So you find if something is in the list and where it is inside of the list. So as we can see here, I'm saying, hey, go to my list and look for the first occurrence of the string ball. So it boots down this list and it goes, no, yep, one. And it sends you back the index position. And that's why this method is called find index, because it's sending you back the index position. So you'll see here, if I'm looking for ball, the position variable, whoops, the position variable will be equal to one. If I look for car, it's going to send me back two. Now, of course, you say, what happens if you look for some weird word like this? It's not in our list. Most programming languages all handle this the same way. Since good values would be zero and above, if you did find the, uh, the item you're looking for, if you don't find the item, it sends back negative one. You'd never get negative one back for an item you found, so this is a nice one that basically means not found. So what you can do is, is you can say position equals list find index mylist Janetka, and then you can ask on the next line, if position is negative one, that's the test for it wasn't found. If position is greater or equal to zero, you know it was found. And then you can do stuff with the position, like you may want to say, hey, delete that position, right? Or insert something at that position, right? So it's nice. Other little commands you can do, which, uh, you know, you'll figure out afterwards. You can clear a list, which just takes out the contents. You can always ask how many items are in a list with DS list size and name the list. Uh, you can ask if a list is empty and it sends back true or false and you can decide what to do. And then this one's often ignored by beginners, but it's a very important one. If you create a list, it's sort of setting aside a little spot in memory for the list and the data. And if you have code that keeps creating lists but never deletes them, you start to get a little memory leak in your program and more memory starts getting used up. And if it is something you do a lot, it'll eventually use up all the memory in your program and you end up getting trouble. So what you want to do, if you are finished with a list for some reason, you should destroy the list with the destroy command. Sort of clean up your mess, right? That you've left behind in memory there. Okay. A lot of beginners forget that one, but you should do it. Now, just to see a couple of these commands working, I've just got a little sample program here. I'm going to use this little object here called tester, and it, no sprite, but I'm just going to attach a couple key codes to it just to show you the general uh, use of it here. So inside of tester here, I've quickly written a few little uh, commands, basically just showing you the basics here. Uh, you can peek at the code after to go over a little slower, but in the create of tester, there's me creating a list. So my list, ds list create. When I hit the A key, I'm going to add the word apple to the list. 
and then I'm going to also show the size of the list. So you'll see here I grab the size of the list with a local variable, and then I just say the list is now that many long, just so you can keep track that it is growing um, and adding on to the list. I do the same thing with B. B adds the word ball. C adds the word car. D is going to try to delete the first apple it can find. So you'll see here I do the, let's look for the apple first. So please find the index in this list and try to find the word apple and store that answer in position. Now remember that could either send back a number zero or larger or that's going to send back negative one if it's not found. So I do a quick check. If the position variable was zero or larger, I'm going to say, hey, delete that position. And I know I just deleted that apple position that it just found. Apple's gone. Otherwise, I must not have been able to find the apple. I must have got the negative one back. Right? The F key. I try to find an apple and tell me where it is. So it's going to find the first apple when you do find index. So it looks for apple. If it's negative one again, no apples found. Otherwise, it's going to tell me the position that was returned. So if you keep track as you're hitting these keys, you can confirm that this is all working nicely. The L key, good one here. The L key is going to tell me what the last item in the list is. So it's like the last thing the player added. This one here, first you have to know the size of the list. Once you know the size of the list, so let's say it was 10. So if the number is bigger than 0, right, we know we can do this operation here. I'm going to say go find the value at index position 10 minus 1. Remember, 10 items in the list, 9 is the last index position there. So uh, don't go past the last index position. And then whatever that answer is, the value it finds there, I'm storing it when it's returned, and then I can print it out. I don't actually think I need the string command there, but it never hurts. The else is if count was not bigger than zero, which basically means the list had zero size, and if it's zero sized, I'll just say empty list. And lastly, the X key, just an example of destroying the list. It gets destroyed, and the neat thing is if you destroy the list, then you try to do other operations to the list, like find a value in it, you're going to get an error because the list technically is no longer referenced in memory, so you're going to get problems. So you give this a quick go, and you uh, can fiddle with it here. We'll put the exe file in the drive there for you. But I'll hit A to add an apple. It adds an apple. I'll add another apple. I'll add a ball. I'll add a car. I'll add a ball. I'll add another apple. Now I'll check what the last item is. L. The last value is apple. That's right. I can add a ball. Last item. It's a ball. I can try to delete an apple. D. It said it deleted it. D, I know there's another apple. I think I have one more. I try to delete another one, and it says can't find an apple in the list. So it's not able to find any more. It's getting that negative one back. Um, what was my other operation there? F, find an apple. Well, let's add one. Let's then add a ball. And if I say find an apple with the F key, finds the apple at four. So you can fiddle there, and it should all work. And then there's the X. Destroyed the list, and now I'm going to try to find an apple. F. Er, right? I get the error. So it says data structure with index does not exist. So it's gone, which is expected. Now, if you want to check the documents in GameMaker, there's actually a uh, there is a method in here called uh, exists. DS exists. I'm trying to see here. There it is, right there. You can actually check if a data structure exists before you try to use it. If you know you're going to be doing tons of this stuff and you aren't able to keep track, right? That way you don't accidentally use a list that's been destroyed. Now, that's a little introduction to the lists. 
really those are the uh, six or seven main scripts you use with them. They're pretty easy to use. I should note that you can also make your lists global, just like any other ID or variable. But now you got to type global.mylist every single time you're using the name. Okay, but maybe that's what you have to do in your program. Go try the challenge, which is uh, not too hard of a one, but it's a beautiful challenge. It'll get you to use a couple of these methods, basically doing a player's grab bag inventory. They're going to pick up items and know which items they have and then use items. So it's a great practice to see if you've got the hang of this one on your own. Have fun doing that.